Hey, a friend, Chris here from iLogic Pro Rules, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. This week, I have a special set of videos for you that is related to audio interfaces. This is inspired by the questions and requests for content I've received through the years, but more specifically, how to get started with the ever popular Apollo interface from Universal Audio and Logic Pro. So if you're in the market for an interface, maybe you're considering an Apollo or you already own an Apollo, but maybe you're a little psyched out, a little intimidated by the entire UAD console because that's very much part of the Apollo experience. This set of videos, these three videos this week is for you. This is in collaboration with Universal Audio. And throughout this week, I'm gonna help you get from the ground up, set up with Apollo, the UAD console and get recording in the Logic Pro. In this video, I'm gonna give you a lay of the land of the UAD console. By the end of this video, we're gonna record some electric guitar. So let's dig into it. For those brand new to Universal Audio and the Apollo, it's worth stating that number one, the company is well known and revered for the quality of its DSP effects and hardware, which was built on the legacy of the founding father of the company, Bill Putnam Sr., who is the inventor and entrepreneur behind Universal Audio and some incredible technologies. Number two, keeping this legacy of recording technology in mind, UA and Apollo approach recording in a modern environment on a laptop or a computer in a DAW a little different from other audio interfaces on the market. In that, Apollo approaches recording from that of a console perspective. But what does this mean, a console perspective? Well, taking a look on screen at the UAD console, this is the software mixer that goes hand in hand with the Apollo interface. Just imagine that the UAD console is a pro recording studio that is filled to the brim with all sorts of pro gear for you to use for your recording productions. In fact, when you purchase an Apollo X Gen 2 interface, you'll also receive the Essentials Plus bundle, which provides you with the sound of analog preamps, EQs, compressors, guitar amps and pedal, reverbs, delays, and more. And you can load these effects right into the UAD console and record right through the effects. And these effects don't run off of your max processing power, but instead runs off the processing power of the Apollo. So instead of recording your tracks raw and waiting till a later mix stage to apply processing and achieve the sound you had in your head, you can instead load the effects into the UAD console and even record those effects into Logic Pro. So it's almost like Logic Pro is a tape machine. You're just printing to tape, right, from the console. The console is really the center of the recording experience. And there's four main benefits to this console perspective. Number one, you're able to record in a low latency environment without sacrificing the ability to use plugins. Of course, Logic Pro has software monitoring that allows you to hear yourself through Logic Pro's different audio effects, whether it be yourself playing guitar through one of Logic's amps or your voice through a reverb. However, when a project gets far enough along, you might start to bump into issues of latency. And then you'll have to juggle the buffer size in Logic Pro to try to achieve the lowest latency you can. And this can become quite challenging to manage. Number two, you're able to make creative decisions right at the recording stage, which will get you much closer to a polished or finished sound faster. Three, you're able to have a persistent signal, or that's kind of another way of saying that you're able to have all of the effects that you like to use, the amps, the preamps, set up, ready to go all the time. And number four, you're able to leverage a hybrid workflow by loading your UAD plugins right off the DSP of the Apollo interface, even in Logic Pro, which will reduce the instances of system overloads. Not only is there processing power to apply effects that you can record and monitor through the UAD console and the Logic Pro, but there's also processing power to tune your speakers to your space using the Apollo monitor correction add-on. This is in collaboration with Sonarworks, it requires a sound ID reference license as well as the AMC add-on. But for owners of Apollo X Generation 1 and 2, unfortunately not the solo, but the Gen 1 and Gen 2 of the other interfaces of the lineup, you can use sound ID reference to, of course, create a calibration file of your speakers in your space so it tunes your speakers. But instead of loading a plugin into a Logic Pro project and then having to remember to turn off the plugin when you bounce your project, instead the calibration files are loaded into the DSP of the Apollo and it runs right off the hardware. So you can tune your speakers as well as the headphone outputs for your model of headphones, low latency. And there's no juggling of plugins, no system-wide apps. It just runs off the hardware. So let's now set up the Apollo with Logic Pro so I can begin recording. Step one should be of no surprise to anyone. In Logic Pro with an open project, let's go to Logic Pro in the top menu bar, go down to settings and to audio. In the devices tab under the audio settings, I need to set the input and output device for Logic Pro to that of the Universal Audio Thunderbolt device. 
Once selected, you'll also want to set your I.O. buffer size to 1024, which is the largest buffer size available. The reason being is that I'm not going to monitor through Logic Pro's audio effects. Instead, I'll be monitoring through the effects in the UAD console. So setting a small buffer size to record is just not necessary. Once the Universal Audio Thunderbolt device is selected, click Apply. Step two, of course, is to set the input of an audio track and channel strip to that of one of the inputs of the Apollo interface. So I'll go right to the input section in the inspector here for this audio track and channel strip. Click and then navigate to input. Okay, so there's plenty of inputs to go around, but I only have these generic titles of input one, input two, all the way to input 32. While these generic titles are totally usable, I much prefer a more specific naming scheme so I know exactly what inputs and outputs I'm using while in Logic Pro. So let's change that right now. Once again, navigating to the menu at the top, if we go to mix, about halfway down, I'm gonna select the option IO labels. A window pops up and on the left-hand side, we see a column for channel. And there's all those generic titles for input one, input two, so on and so forth. Second from the left is a column called provided by driver. And here we see a much more specific naming scheme for the different inputs and outputs, right? So for inputs one and two, we see mic, line, and high Z one and two. For inputs three through eight, we see mic, line, three through eight. Then there's ADAT one through eight, virtual one through eight. And this includes all of the Apollo outputs as well. These names are reflected in the IO matrix of the UAD console. So in console, let's go to the top menu bar, click on UAD console and go to preferences. In the preferences window is a tab for IO matrix. And here you can see the organization and naming for all the different inputs and outputs for the Apollo interface. And you can see right in the IO matrix is the option to apply a custom name. So for input one, maybe I'll type in vocal microphone. If we return to Logic Pro, we don't see the name change quite yet, but if I close the IO label window, go back to mix, IO labels, you can see right there, vocal microphone for input one, which can be selected. And now if I go to the input in Logic Pro, notice in parentheses right next to input one is the more specific custom title, vocal microphone, which was derived from the UAD console's IO matrix. For those just getting started with Apollo, I recommend that you set the mode in the IO matrix to default. This way you can get familiar and comfortable with the different inputs and outputs of your Apollo system before getting too far ahead with customizations. But in the IO labels window in Logic Pro, I recommend that you select the first input, hold shift and scroll down to the last output for the Apollo and click. This will select all of the inputs and outputs, then click on just one of the radio buttons for the provided by driver names so that you can see these more specific names for all of the inputs and outputs. Now, when you set the input or output for any channel strip in Logic Pro, you'll see these much more specific titles in parentheses. I'm gonna set my channel strip to input one for recording guitar. The last step for setup is to go back to Logic Pro, to settings and to audio. And under the general tab in the audio settings, you wanna make sure that software monitoring is disabled. Again, the reason is because we're not gonna be listening to this guitar through Logic's amps or anything else in Logic Pro. Instead, I'll be loading an amp sound and other effects in the UAD console that I'll be monitoring or even recording through. With Logic Pro all set up, let me get set up in the UAD console so I can start recording. Now the flow of operation in the UAD console for each channel strip starts from the top and works its way down. Just like in Logic Pro, you set the input for each channel strip and then you can assign audio effects and then make level or panning adjustments, the workflow in UAD console is essentially the same. But the difference being that the top section of analog one through eight is your preamp control, which you can also access from the Apollo interface itself. So for example, I have a large condenser microphone connected to analog input one. In this case, the large condenser requires phantom power to operate. So I'll enable that in UAD console. Then I'll need to turn up the preamp gain so we can hear a healthy level from this microphone. Beyond that, if you have an especially hot signal that you intend to record, you may want to enable the pad to reduce the input level so that you have more headroom to record with. From there, there's a polarity button if you're recording in a multi-mic situation and you may want to reverse the polarity of one of your tracks. And lastly, a high pass filter to roll off any low end rumble or noise that is not part of the actual signal that you intend to record. Now, up until this point, I've just been using the clean unison preamps of the Apollo, which is totally fine. That's totally usable. However, there's so much more to these preamps than meets the eye. When you click on a unison field, a browser pops open, 
And right here, you have the ability to customize the preamp of your Apollo, either by choosing a different preamp, a channel strip, or guitar amp, bass amp, or pedal. So for example, we could choose the Century Tube channel strip, which will bring the sound of a tube preamp and channel strip to analog one. But this is not just an emulation. The preamp physically transforms itself and the impedance loading to provide you with the experience of recording literally through this tube preamp and channel strip. So the Apollo is like a chameleon. You can literally be recording through eight different preamps, channel strips, amps simultaneously, and each preamp will adapt itself to provide that exact sound, that exact feel, that exact experience. Now, keep in mind that the unison pre's are part of the sound that is recorded into Logic Pro. To demonstrate, I'm going to connect my guitar to my Apollo using the instrument one input. This will switch analog one from a microphone input to that of a high Z instrument input. Next, I'll click on the unison slot and I'll select the Fender 55 Tweed Deluxe. Now, plugging in the instrument one is like plugging into a Fender amp. Let me switch to Logic Pro, hit record, so you can see and hear what gets recorded. All right, so as you can see, the waveform clearly is that of a guitar amp. If I hit play in Logic Pro, it sounds like a guitar amp. So again, whatever you select in the unison pre-slot will be part of the sound recorded into Logic. Below the preamp section is a section for inserts. Here you can load different types of plugins like EQ, compression, modulation, and other effects to either monitor yourself through or record yourself through. You'll know if you're recording or monitoring through these effects by looking at the LEDs directly beneath the insert section. At the moment, the LED for monitor is lit up in blue. So any plugins I load into this insert section will not be recorded in the logic. Let me demonstrate. In this case, I'll load an instance of the Galaxy Echo plugin in the first insert slot for my guitar. With the channel strip set to monitor, let's see what gets recorded in the Logic Pro. Okay, so you could hear the delay while recording guitar. Let's hear what it sounds like in Logic Pro. There you go. You could hear clearly the delay effect has not been printed into Logic. Now, if I click on the insert button to switch from monitor to record, let's hear the resulting audio after I track again. Here we go. And what does this sound like in Logic? This time around, the delay effect has been committed or printed directly into the recording session in Logic Pro. And of course, there are other controls related to each effect. When I hover my mouse over the effect, I have the option to either bypass or enable the effect, open or close the plugin window, as well as close or open the browser. In the browser, I could select a new plugin to load in this slot. And if you ever want to remove a plugin, just right click and select remove. At the very bottom, you have control over monitoring in terms of level and pan placement for each track that you're recording. For example, let's say I'm recording two guitar players simultaneously. I may want to hard pan one guitar player to the left and one guitar player to the right so that we have clear separation between the two guitarists as they record. And if we decide that the left guitar player is maybe a little too loud, I can reduce his level while boosting the right guitar player. And as you're getting levels and setting up, you may want to solo a track or mute a track with which you can use the solo or mute button for each channel strip. All right, now that you have a lay of the land when it comes to Apollo and UAD console and Logic Pro and how they work together, in the next video, we're gonna dig deeper into what makes UAD console and Apollo special with recording acoustic guitar and vocals. I'll see you for more in the next video.